it's getting closer to the road and it's getting closer to our homes and slowly being destroyed by this course of climate change. Max Te'ea lives in Kiribati, a South Pacific nation whose very existence is under threat. Rising sea levels mean the entire country could soon become uninhabitable. We're not going to run from the problems, we're going to face it. There are countries in the world who have islands, and they've built their islands because they have the two things. They have the technology and they have the funds. The 120,000 residents of Kiribati want to stay here and protect themselves as best as they can. But how long can that last? When we were kids, the high tide usually stops maybe he from here. Here, it stops here, and now then, as we are grow, growing up, the high tide just moved, moved, and now it's hitting the, the land, it's hitting the edge, and it's getting, it's corrupting everything. As you can see, trees are falling down, not enough sand to hold them, and it's getting close to the road. And I think this is not, um, it's just the beginning, maybe it will keep on going. Yeah, it was not always like that. It's getting closer to our homes and it's a big deal for us. Slowly being destroyed by this course of climate change. Kiribati is made up of 33 small islands spread across the Pacific. In some areas, the ground is three meters above the water, but almost everywhere else, it's only one meter. Rising sea levels are causing land to disappear. The number of storms is increasing, and drinking water is becoming salty. Max's grandfather, Kira Rice Ioana, has been living here since he was a child. Scientists started noting a rapid rise in sea levels in the 1990s. If the water continues to rise, it will erode our land. The sea is drawing closer and closer and will make our lives unpleasant, don't you think? What should we do? Maybe this is climate change, but what can we do about it? Nothing. We can't do anything and we urgently need help. Not everyone in Kiribati thinks the situation is hopeless. <laughs> Pelanesi Alofa is a climate activist and founder of Kirakan, a local climate protection organization. She and other campaigners bought this plot of land when it was completely flooded. Together they work to build a wall and drain the land. They want to show others that they are a resilient nation and they don't want to leave. This is our resilient village. Yeah. We are always underwater yeah. when always it's high fighting. tide. We were not here, water will be right in the main road. Residents are braving the encroaching seawater. They're teaching others how to grow food in constantly salinized soil. Pelanesi's nephew, Ralph Spring, is the gardener here, and he knows how cultivation can work in these conditions. It's, uh, growing food um, uh, on raised beds over the ground. If, you, if your place is uh, salt, uh, salt water inundated, and um, we also make our own soil, and that's a skill that every household should, uh, should know, to plant their own food to be healthy. We collect a lot of our browns. These are chips made from uh, all sorts of, we have some leaves inside that are brown now, some, some, as you can see, some of the sticks from brushes and all. This one will stay at the bottom because we know this will take time to decompose, and then we'll put good soil on top, that's what we'll use for planting. His services are a vital contribution in a country where an increasing number of crops are dying because of the salt water. But Pelanesi and her colleague Maris Peter know that this won't fix everything. They need more resources. You know, Kiribati, our government wanted to raise islands, eh? And maybe we, we do not have the means to do that. But there are countries in the world who have islands and they've built their islands because they have the two things. They have the technology and they have the funds. They have money. Those are the two things to help us to 
stop the problem that we're facing. We're not going to run from the problems, we're going to face it. But we do not have those two things. It's not yet clear exactly how the main island of Tarawa will be elevated. The problem is that the island is densely populated. Residential buildings, government buildings and hospitals would need to be demolished before the island could be raised up and then rebuilt. Another possibility is filling in a kind of replacement island. The government has remained tight-lipped on these costly ideas and so far nobody has responded to our requests for an interview. China is one possible donor, because it works closely with Kiribati. But the West fears new Chinese military bases in the Pacific. As yet, there's no information on the Kiribati government's plan in this area. Claire and Tangaroa and Terea say the same thing. They live with their 10-year-old daughter in a small house on Tarawa, the main island of Kiribati. They say information about climate change is only reaching the other islands very slowly, despite the visible changes. So, because the, the term climate change for our people, it's really a new word. But they, they, can aware, they are aware of the changes that occur in, in their island. So, by answering that, I think uh, it's definitely confusing. But our people are facing the, 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 the severe impact. And yeah, I think we experience it in, in so many ways. The water already blackish. Of course, we have a, a, a very narrow island. But why now, you know? People used to have good water. But why now that we, we have a, a, a salty water? Right now, water is the biggest problem. Rising sea levels are pushing salt water further inland, making groundwater unusable. Importing bottled drinking water is too expensive, and rainwater is the only option for many people. Tangaroa says you can no longer distinguish between the rainy and dry seasons. Sometimes it rains all the time, sometimes not for years, making the water supply inconsistent. Uh, because this one is full, yeah. and I have to collect uh, extra water uh, that we can use for, for our needs, because we drink rainwater. Claire and Tangaroa also have a well in their garden. Their water isn't salty because they live in the middle of the island. But that also means they have a lot of responsibility. Not only do they drink from the well, their neighbours also come here to get water. That's why Tangaroa cleans it once a month, and the neighbours help out. Just to make sure that our, our water inside this, this one is clean every, every day. Yeah? You know when we start building a house, we don't have a we don't have a water tank, we don't have rain water. We use this this well to drink uh, the water. We used to drink this water, and we really need to take care of this well, this water. That's in case no no rain no rain. This is our water. Yeah, this is our drinking water. <laughs> Kiribati is full of solidarity. Tangaroa is on his way to see his friend Tatabo Arawaoa, who lives right by the sea. Like the other coastal residents, he's built a wall in front of his house for protection. It has been standing for 40 years and has made seaside living possible on the overcrowded island. But that's gradually changing. When they uh, built their the wall that time, yeah, they, they don't have a problem with the, the sea, the, the sea. And by that time, things happen to their sea wall. They start uh, the wall, their sea wall will start uh, uh, broken during the, the king's tides. I get scared when the king tides come, especially when it's windy. My wall is always on the verge of breaking. The next morning, they survey the damage from the night before. It wasn't as bad as Tatabo had feared, but he still has to repair his wall. A stone has come loose. It's only a small repair needed today, but it has to be done quickly.
If I don't fix this now, the next flood this afternoon will cause even more damage. Stones would break loose and the land beneath it will just get washed away. It can still be saved. However, researchers predict that the rate at which sea levels are rising will only accelerate. More conservative calculations predict a rise of 1.1 meters compared to today. Should that occur, Kiribati's fate would be uncertain. But judging by the impact that the climate crisis is already having on this small country, it's reasonable to assume that land will continue to shrink in the future and that drinking water will become even more scarce. Without international aid, residents could become climate refugees. If our islands disappear uh, from this earth, then um, we, we, will not, we will be nothing. Because what is important for me is my culture, my language my my people so i request to the world that they will be they need to sacrifice and have compassion on the low-lying islands like tuvalu marshall island Maldives, and and kiribati who are already affected by the climate change impact the residents are committed but they need developed countries to invest money and resources to save Kiribati. There's even a song here about climate change. Every child knows the words, just like they know what climate change means for Kiribati. Tangaroa's niece, Cindy Baranato, sings it in the choir. For myself, searching for my refuge As the world is getting worse day and night my people and my future my country on my own stand firm and staying strong until the end of time climate change is growing strong the rising wave will kill us all and we cry yeah, we cry till the Lord to help me through.